एटलीस्ट आर्टिकल उसके अंदर की लाइन नहीं याद हो चल जाएगा ठीक है लेकिन ये प्रोविजंस आपको याद होने चाहिए आर्टिकल गुड मॉर्निंग सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस टू टू थ्री टॉपिक वन इज लद्दाख डिमांड फॉर शेड्यूल सिक्स स्टेट ओके सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज शेड्यूल सिक्स स्टेट शेड्यूल सिक्स स्टेट क्या है एंड वाई लद्दाख इज डिमांडिंग शेड्यूल सिक्स स्टेट आर दे नॉट हैप्पी विद द करेंट स्टेटस दैट द हैव वट इज द स्टेटस ऑफ लद्दाख Union territory, yes. Okay, where there is no autonomy. Union territories are directly administered by central government. Yes, union territories are the features of unitary. We can say unitary system in India, not the uh, feature of federal system. What is federal system? Powers are divided between whom? two or more levels of government so in india powers are divided or not divided like yes states are also present and state governments also have legislative power executive power schedule 7 is known to everyone yes where three list are there one is concurrent list state list and center list okay which means state governments are enjoying the autonomy hence indian system is a federal system can we say this indian system is a federal system but which type of federal system quasi federal what is quasi federal central government is more powerful yes political concept hai central government is more powerful why Why central government is more powerful? Look, one classical federalism, or we can say perfect federal structure, is the United States, where state governments are equally powerful as the federal government. Yes, but we are not uh, imitated the same system that is present in uh, United States. Why? Because that is the perfect federalism. but we are not having perfect federalism we are having quasi federalism why you are talking about that system parliamentary and presidential system where executive originates from legislature this is the parliamentary system anyone unity ke liye okay aur koi reason why we are having quasi federal structure not the perfect federal structure look the background of federalism of united states was uh we can say during the time of american revolution there were only 13 colonies 13 colonies like india was a colony just like that 13 colonies were present in united states and those colonies were colonized by different colonizer like spanish like british french okay portuguese they all those colonies came together they form a union and uh, via an agreement we can say they formed a union to unite themselves against the colonizers and they fought american war of independence that is american revolution that is in 1776 to 1781 okay they got independence from colonizer and they made an agreement that all those colonies will retain the autonomy yes or no so colonies were independent we can say that colonies became independent first then they formed a union government yes they became independent first and via an agreement they formed the union government that is american government but they retained their autonomy what happened in case of india 
when Britishers left India, they transferred all the powers to the government of India. Yes, and government of India divided that power amongst various states according to administrative convenience because it was very hard to govern that big country which is diverse in nature. Yes or no? So our federal system was not a result of an agreement but their federal system was the result of an agreement. When we became independent, India was partitioned. Many of the princely states declared their independence like Hyderabad, Junagad, Jammu and Kashmir ka issue thai. Apart from that, Jodhpur, Travancore. Yes, they declared their independence. So at that time, there was a need to have a centralized authority. That is the union government. Yes, so first union government was formed. Union government divided its power among various states according to the administrative convenience. That is why due to our socio-economic political background or historical background, we are having quasi-federal system. Yes, but United States is having perfect federal system. Is it clear? Within that quasi-federal system, we can say that all states are equal. All states are equal in India. No. Why? Some states are enjoying special provision. Like Jammu and Kashmir was enjoying special provision. So in our federal system, that to quasi-federal structure, various states are enjoying different degree of autonomy. Yes, different degree of power. Like Jammu and Kashmir. Like Schedule 5 state. Schedule 6 state. Yes. This system is known as asymmetrical federalism. Okay. This system is known as asymmetrical federalism. So the demand of Ladakh to be included in the Schedule 6 is with respect to the asymmetrical federalism. They are demanding a special provision for themselves. Like a special category status, it is one of the features of asymmetrical federalism. So first, federalism is clear to you. Federalism is clear. What is federalism? Federalism is the favorite topic of UPSC. Favorite topic. Har saal dekh lo question. One question from federalism is compulsory. Wo kaise bhi ghuma ke poochhenge? Topic ka background kya hoga? Federalism. Okay? आज जो दोनों टॉपिक है दोनों ही टॉपिक यूपीएससी के फेवरेट है वन इज फेडरलिज्म एंड अनदर वन इज एनजीओस ओके बोथ द टॉपिक्स आर फेवरेट ऑफ यूपीएससी सो फर्स्ट व्हाट इज फेडरलिज्म फेडरलिज्म इज डिवीजन ऑफ पावर इन टू और मोर लेवल्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दैट इज एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर लेजिस्लेटिव पावर जुडिशियरी पावर Yes, classical federalism is American federalism, where state governments are equally powerful as the union government. Yes, can union government snatch away the autonomy enjoyed by the states in the perfect federalism? No, because already an arrangement was made with the union government. Yes, so no power snatching can be done in the perfect federalism. Yes. Perfect federalism is known as indestructible union of indestructible state. Aapne ye line Lakshmi Kant mein hai na? First chapter mein hai indestructible, indestructible union of indestructible state. This is the perfect federal structure. That the United States of America cannot be distorted. But the autonomy of states, their boundary, their name cannot be changed. This is indestructible union of indestructible state. What has been written for India? Indestructible union of destructible states. Why? <coughs> Why? Indestructible union means unity and integrity of India cannot be threatened. Yes, 
the territorial boundaries of india cannot be diminished yes but destructible state internal reorganization the political boundaries of india within can be changed like earlier jammu and kashmir was a full fledged state now that particular state is divided into two union territories change hua so political boundaries of india within can be changed andhra pradesh was the biggest state it was divided into two states so indestructible union india ka jo outer map hai which remains the same but the internal map changed you got the idea why because we are having quasi federal structure where union government is more powerful then the state government is it clear so federalism is clear quasi federalism is clear the type of federal system that we are having is it clear yes we will discuss that so first why sonam wangchuk is demanding ladakh's inclusion under sixth schedule state okay ladakh is demanding inclusion under schedule six state how many states are there in schedule six four states name those four states assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram are these states enjoying special powers yes special powers are enjoyed by these states autonomous district councils are established in the state of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram and those adcs autonomous district councils are enjoying autonomy full autonomy that is why ladakh is also demanding the same status okay what is the uh, argument that they are giving cultural preservation ladakh has a predominantly tribal population kitni hai 97% tribal population that is why they are demanding the sixth schedule provides autonomous governance protect the culture heritage and traditions of tribal community so first thing is the cultural preservation you can say the second thing is their demographic argument that they are having 97% of the tribal population third thing environmental protection ladakh's unique and fragile ecosystem is at risk from unchecked industrial mining activities sixth schedule would grant local council the authority to manage and protect their environment okay that is why ladakh is demanding sixth schedule okay uh, aapne kal pucha tha ki current affairs kaise padhte hain okay this is how you should cover current affairs any topic which is in the news wo to news aapko pata chal gayi now this is the news analysis ओके okay? ये पूरा न्यूज एनालिसिस है दैट व्हाट इज सिक्स शेड्यूल व्हाट इज फिफ्थ शेड्यूल यस हाउ मेनी ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल्स आर देयर इन सिक्स शेड्यूल व्हाट आर द स्पेशल पावर्स दैट दे आर एंजॉइंग यस एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर अरेंजमेंट इज नोन एज असिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म ये न्यूज में नहीं था लेकिन आपको ऐसे न्यूज एनालिसिस करनी होती है पहले जो भी चीज न्यूज में दिखी उसको पढ़ा उसके बाद उसकी डेप्थ में जाना पड़ेगा और वो ऐसे जाओगे और जो डेप्थ में जाओगे वो क्या होगा दे ऑल दो टॉपिक्स आर रिलेटेड टू स्टैटिक टॉपिक पूरा स्टैटिक है करंट में तो सिर्फ न्यूज रहती है एक बाकी तो सारा स्टैटिक ही है ना पूरा पार्ट ओके सो पोलिटिकल ऑटोनॉमी फॉलोइंग द एब्रोगेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल थ्री सेवनटीन टू लद्दाख बिकेम अ यूनियन टेरेटरी विदाउट स्पेशल प्रोटेक्शन previously afforded to it the sixth schedule would provide legislative judicial and executive power to the local council ensuring the greater governance then economic development autonomous governance under the sixth schedule would allow for more sustainable locally driven economic development benefit to the indigenous community what is locally driven economic development locally driven economic development is it different than the mainstream economic development are yes or no yes how it is different different than mainstream economic development the same economic development which is allowed in new delhi cannot be allowed in ladakh yes why because of their 
इकोलॉजिकल फीचर टोपोग्राफिकल फीचर हिली टेवेन है इकोलॉजी सेंसिटिव है ग्लेशियर्स हैं इतना पोल्यूशन वहां पे होगा तो क्या हो जाएगा द एंटायर इको सिस्टम विल कोलेप्स ये सो नो दैट इज वाई वी आर सेइंग दैट लोकली ड्रिवन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट यस यू गॉट द आइडिया दैट इज वाई लद्दाख इज डिमांडिंग सिक्स शेड्यूल स्टेटस नाउ ये तो हो गया कंप्लीट ये था करंट अफेयर्स का न्यूज अब होता है एनालिसिस स्टार्ट असिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म वी हैव डिस्कस्ड क्लासिकल फेडरलिज्म क्वासी फेडरलिज्म विद इन द्वासी फेडरलिज्म वी आर हैविंग मेनी असिमेट्रिकल फीचर्स यस देखिए डेफिनेशन असिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म रेफर्स टू अ सिस्टम ऑफ गवर्नेंस वेर डिफरेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट स्टेट रीजन विद इन अ फेडरेशन Have waving degree of autonomy and power. Example, Article 370, special status enjoyed by Jammu and Kashmir. Yes. So, different constituent states or region within the federation have waving degree of autonomy and power, which is known as asymmetrical federalism. That question was asked by UPSC. ये हमने polity की class में test में किया है ना इसको? हाँ. ये डायरेक्ट पूछा हुआ है असिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म पे क्वेश्चन ठीक है दिस कॉन्ट्रास्ट विद सिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म सिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म इज क्लियर दैट ऑल द स्टेट्स विल एंजॉय सेम डिग्री ऑफ पावर सेम डिग्री ऑफ ऑटोनोमी वो हो जाएगा कौन सा सिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म वेर ऑल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट स्टेट हैव इक्वल पावर्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन फॉलो Asymmetrical federalism. Certain states have special provision under the constitution, such as Article 370 for Jammu and Kashmir, Article 371 for various states granting them special autonomy. Asymmetrical federalism. Now, what is the reason to have asymmetrical federalism? Is there any reason for it, or just as it is kept? Yes, diversity of population. Jammu and Kashmir agreed to accede upon Union of India on various terms and condition. Okay, they demanded higher autonomy. Yes, we gave them higher degree of autonomy under Article 370. That was the case of Jammu and Kashmir. Other tribal area like North Eastern region, they are having distinct culture. ethnic diversity to preserve that ethnic diversity in north eastern region we gave them certain degree of autonomy certain special provisions were made for north eastern state you got the idea okay to to preserve the diversity or to meet the special demand of any specific region or any specific state various asymmetrical features were included in indian constitution okay Asymmetrical federalism aims to balance the unity. Unity is balanced via quasi-federal structure. Yes or no? Unity is maintained or not? Why maintained? Because in the quasi-federal structure, union government is more powerful. Union government is more powerful. When union government is more powerful, unity is preserved. Yes. but we have to preserve unity in diversity yes first look after independence two target were there one is to preserve unity in diversity and second target was diversity in unity bol sakte hain Unity in diversity. Diversity was there. Unity was to preserve. Strong union government was established. With strong union government, we preserved unity in diversity. But in the long term, diversity needs to be preserved. Otherwise. when any of the ethnic community will feel that our culture our ethnicity yes our heritage is threatened then they will start rebellion they starts demanding 
separation yes or no hence diversity within the unity needs to be preserved okay so after establishment of strong union government in 1947 various provisions were made to preserve diversity within the unity and those features are asymmetrical features aisa bol sakte hain sakte hain isko these are the keywords should be used in the examination be it society paper or gs paper 2 to preserve the unity in diversity constitution has many features which are unitary in nature to preserve unity in diversity constitution have many features many feature which are unitary in nature unitary in nature because after partition we did not want that other state okay to be separated from india yes or no that is why unity has to be maintained and that unity can be maintained only when the union government is more powerful. And to make union government more powerful, our constitution made certain arrangements. Those arrangements are known as unitary features. Can you name those unitary features which are present in Indian constitution? Emergency provision. Emergency provisions. Article 352, 356 and Article 360 or you can write Part 18 of the Constitution. Part 18 of the Constitution, Emergency Provision. Very good. Other provisions. Single Constitution. Very good. Single Constitution or Single Citizenship single citizen ha or kuch residuary power what is residuary power first class hai kya aapki okay okay what is residuary power yes no idea residuary power hmm either no idea you all know that all the powers of union government are divided into three list sabko pata hai baat schedule 7 in the constitution divides one is union list another one is state list another one is concurrent list is it clear to everyone subjects are divided in the into three list Many subjects are mentioned in the state list where only state government can make laws. Yes, concurrent list where both the government can make laws. But any subject which are not mentioned in any of the list, us list mein mention in hai, those powers lies with the union government. Those powers are known as residuary power. So in India, residuary powers lies with the union government. Union government. Okay. Like right to privacy. Yeah, data protection. Data protection was not mentioned in any of the list. Yes. Why? Because in 1947, there was no concept of such data. Yes. So that particular thing cannot be mentioned in any of the list. Hence, that is the residuary subject. If that is the residuary subject, hence to make laws with respect to data protection or right to privacy or any such uh, use of data can only be made by union government. You got the idea what is residuary power? Yes. So many of such features which provide greater power to the union government and thereby we ensure unity in diversity. But in the long run, diversity needs to be preserved. Okay. Otherwise, secessionist movement will start. 
in fact despite of having many of the special provisions secessionist movement are still going on yes or no in india kyunki wo diversity bahut zyada hai na once is uh, one uh, size fit to all approach yes cannot be implemented in case of india that is why asymmetrical features were added in indian constitution theek hai kya kya features hain dekhte hain okay so asymmetrical federalism aims to balance unity with diversity allowing regions to maintain their unique identities while being part of the larger federal structure a classical federalism like us or australia is symmetrical federalism where all states enjoy the same power and autonomy now key features and significance of a symmetrical federalism first unequal powers some states have more legislative administrative and fiscal powers than others article 370 was the best example okay that jammu and kashmir was enjoying larger power than the other states yes or no more powers constitutional and de facto arrangement a symmetry can be enshrined in the constitution yes it was enshrined in the constitution or arise from practical arrangement and policy like special category status it is not mentioned in the constitution but it it is up to the union government whether to designate any particular state as a special category state or not like in the recent budget government announced a special package for bihar and andhra pradesh yes or no this is the practical arrangement hai na to save the alliance yes or no to save the alliance government made practical arrangement yes a special package for bihar and andhra pradesh next cultural and ethnic accommodation a symmetrical federalism allows for the accommodation of india's diverse culture ethnic groups ensuring that their unique identities are preserved and respected yes then political stability by granting special regions more autonomy the central government can address regional aspirations and grievances contributing to the political stability and nation national unity what was the regional aspiration there is a region in assam where there was demand of border land yes but what government did government constituted border land autonomous district council certain degree of autonomy were granted to the border land dist autonomous district council okay one uh, militant organization was formed by borders and they started insurgency in that particular area against the government of assam and government of india okay to accommodate that diversity autonomy was granted to that particular region within the state of assam you got the idea samajh gaye baat ko तो वो जो डिमांड थी स्पेशल स्टेटस की वो खत्म हो गई ठीक है सो रीजनल एस्पिरेशन कैन बी फिल्ड वायाट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म एंड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट टेलर्ड गवर्नेंस कैन एड्रेस स्पेसिफिक रीजनल नीड्स मोर इफेक्टिवली प्रमोटिंग बैलेंस्ड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट अक्रॉस द कंट्री असिमेट्रिकल फेडरलिज्म इन इंडिया इज ए डायनेमिक एंड इवॉल्विंग सिस्टम वाई इट इज डायनेमिक एंड इवॉल्विंग why it is dynamic and evolving look society is not a static concept society is evolving with the evolution of society the demands and needs of the society can be changed yes or no according to that demand that system which fulfill that particular demand needs to be dynamic yes or no like recently government of india gave the classical language status to four to five more languages yes one is marathi one is assamese aur kon kon si hai pali prakrit and char ko diya hai abhi panch ko hai na kuch ye abhi do din pehle ki news hai classical language status to five languages what it is asymmetrical federalism 
because a special status was given to the language of Maharashtra. Yes, classical language status. Asymmetrical federalism is one type of asymmetrical federalism. Okay, that is why we are saying that it is dynamic and evolving. You got the idea? Like, there is a demand that Methili, one region in the Bihar, is known as Mithila region. And their language is Methili. So people are de de demanding that Methili should be included in this particular segment. Many of the people are demanding that Rajasthani language should be given the uh, status of official language. What is this particular demand? Asymmetrical federalism. Yes, if government is giving official language status to the Rajasthani language, that is nothing but our dynamic and evolving system. You got the idea? Clear way? So, you can connect it to a lot of places. Examples, you will have to think a little bit. Okay? Asymmetrical federalism in India is a unique feature of its federal structure where different states and regions have varying degree of autonomy and power. This system is, okay, constitutional provisions. One is 370. We have already discussed, but this particular provision is abrogated. Is it clear? Second, Article 371 provides a special provision for the various states, including Maharashtra, Gujarat, Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, Andhra Pradesh, Sikkim, Mizoram, etc. Then, fifth schedule state deals with the administration and control of scheduled area and scheduled tribes in states except the state of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. Name those 10, 10 states which are having scheduled five areas. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Jharkhand, Odisha, and Himachal Pradesh. Okay? Schedule 5 region. Yaha pe kya bola? That schedule area and schedule tribe in any state except state of Assam. In Chavo ke liye koon sa schedule hai? 6th schedule hai. Okay? Koon koon sa hai? Mainne diya hua hai yaha pe. Chha ye baad mein dekhenge isko. Thik hai? इसके अलावा पहले ये देख लो शेड्यूल फाइव हिस्ट्री ऑफ शेड्यूल फाइव एंड सिक्स दीज आर द टेन स्टेट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू शेड्यूल एरिया वन इज आंध्र प्रदेश तेलंगाना छत्तीसगढ़ गुजरात हिमाचल प्रदेश झारखंड मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र उड़ीसा एंड राजस्थान यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दीज फाइव दीज टेन स्टेट्स अदर फीचर्स ओके सो फर्स्ट वन 370 asymmetrical provision 371 fifth schedule sixth schedule within the 371 many of the articles are there article 371 for nagaland 371b for assam 371c for manipur 371d for andhra pradesh kya kya hai padhiye provision no act of parliament applies to the state of nagaland in respect to religious social practice of the Nagas, which means if government is talking about implementation of uniform civil code, then that particular code will not be applicable with respect to the Nagaland. This is the autonomy that will be enjoyed by Nagaland. You got the idea? This is asymmetrical federalism. So uniform civil code will be applicable to all the states, but not in the states of Nagaland. Because their religious and social practice will be preserved. So one size fit to all approach is not applicable. Ye bol sakte? Why? Because diversity, cultural diversity. Okay. Naga customary law and procedure, administration of civil and criminal justice involving decision according to Naga customary law, ownership, transfer of land and its resources without the concurrence of the Legislative Assembly of Nagaland. Asymmetrical federalism hai ya nahi hai? Yes. Second, 371b, Assam. The President may provide for the constitution and functioning of the committee of Assam Legislative Assembly consisting of members of elected from Assam's state tribal areas. A special provision. Aisa or states mein nahi hai. 
इट इज स्पेशल प्रोविजन फॉर आसाम थ्री सेवेंटी वन सी मणिपुर द प्रेसिडेंट मे प्रोवाइड फॉर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ अ कमेटी ऑफ इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स फ्रॉम द हिल एरिया इन द मणिपुर लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली द गवर्नर हैज ए स्पेशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू एंश्योर द प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ दिस कमेटी दिस इज स्पेशल प्रोविजन फॉर मणिपुर देन स्पेशल प्रोविजन फॉर आंध्र प्रदेश एंड Telangana provides for equitable opportunity and facility in public employment and education to the people of different parts of the state. It includes provision for the establishment of local cadre and the equitable distribution of the post. Is it clear? Then, three seventy one E for Andhra Pradesh establishment of Central University in the Andhra Pradesh. Three seventy one F ensure the protection of rights and interest of various section of the population of Sikkim. So, as I have said, all of this you have to read. Okay? Point is that you have to be aware of it. Okay? At least article. Uske under ki line nahi yaad ho, chal jayega. Okay? But these provisions you have to be aware of. Article three seventy one A for Nagaland, B for Assam, C for Manipur, D for आंध्र प्रदेश तेलंगाना ई फॉर आंध्र प्रदेश एफ एफ फॉर सिक्किम जी फॉर मणिपुर जी फॉर मिजोरम ओके एच फॉर अरुणाचल प्रदेश आई फॉर गोवा एंड थ्री सेवेंटी वन गवर्नर ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड टू स्टैब्लिश डेवलपमेंटल बोर्ड फॉर विदर्भ एंड अदर रीजन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द डिग्री ऑफ ऑटोनोमी दट दे आर एंजॉइंग Like it is only written in case of Nagaland, so it will not be applicable with the state of Nagaland specifically. दूसरे states में कैसे होगा वो depend करेगा, ठीक है? लेकिन Nagaland में तो नहीं होगा. ये तो अभी हमने देख ही लिया, सामने ही दिखा हुआ है कि होगा ही नहीं वो. ठीक है? Now that was the article. वो जो जहाँ से मैंने वो लिया था पहला वाला that uh, uh, Sonam Wangchuk is demanding a special status for. Okay, so this particular thing is written in this article. So as it is, I have taken it from there. What is the history of fifth and sixth schedule? Tribal population were never fully subjugated by earlier Muslim rulers and the Britishers. They did not intervene in the tribal customary laws and their lifestyle. Till the entry of the Britishers, tribals were the masters of the forest and the ancestral land. This is the history. Then, what happened? Britishers started intervention into the tribal land. Why? First, forest resource. Prime ob objective kya tha? Forest resource. Timber. From those tribal area. Second, land revenue. They intervened into the tribal customary practices. They introduce outsider zamindars in those areas to collect the land revenue. Two major objective of the Britishers. Okay, so however, initial British laws and their forest policies affected the tribal way of life. Their traditional rights over the forest land were not recognized, and their movement inside the forest became restricted. This discontentment resulted into tribal rebellions or tribal uprisings. हिस्ट्री में हमने देखा है कोल संथाल मुंडा रेबेलियन बस्तर रेबेलियन एटसेट्रा ओके दीज रेबेलियन कलमिनेटेड इन द ब्रिटिश पॉलिसी ऑफ आइसोलेशन व्हाट वाज दैट पॉलिसी आइसोलेशन व्हाट वाज दैट पॉलिसी इज ऑल अबाउट एंड व्हाट इज द पॉलिसी ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ट्राइबल्स नाउ अरे ये तो है ही लुको वेन इंडिया गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैड थ्री ऑप्शन वन दैट इज दी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ सेम आइसोलेशन पॉलिसी फॉलोड बाय ब्रिटिशर्स टूअर्ड द ट्राइबल दैट नो एफर्ट विल बी मेड टू मेन स्ट्रीम दो ट्राइबल्स उनको आइसोलेशन में ही रहने दो दैट वॉज द First policy. Second policy was assimilation. Assimilation means assimilate tribal community in the mainstream society. 
एंड थर्ड पॉलिसी वॉज नेहरूवियन पंचशील ये आपके पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंस का पार्ट है नेहरूवियन पंचशील विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ट्राइबल ओके सो विच पॉलिसीज दैट वी फॉलोड नेहरूवियन पंचशील वाई आइसो आइसोलेशन पॉलिसी वॉज नॉट फॉलोड वाई आइसोलेशन पॉलिसी वॉज नॉट फॉलोड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ट्राइबल इन इंडिया Yes, tribal will remain backward for always if we follow the isolation policy. Yes or no? Look at the condition of tribal population in Andaman and Nicobar. In one of the current affairs lecture, we discussed the condition of tribes of Andaman and Nicobar. One of the tribe, I guess, Champagne, they reduced to two hundred only. Policy of isolation for certain tribes. We are still following the policy of isolation. We are not making many interventions. Isolation ki policy bhi hai abhi. Okay. What is the policy of assimilation? Policy of assimilation with respect to the mainland tribe like Bhil, Gond. These tribes are assimilated into the society. Yes, into the mainstream society. You got the idea. And Nehruvian Panchashil is a different idea. We are following all the three policies. Although government of India is saying that we are following Nehruvian Panchashil, but in reality we are following all three policies: isolationism, assimilation, and Nehruvian Panchashil. Okay, this is the topic with respect to post-independence India. देखो tribal के बारे में हमने सब पढ़ लिया है. एक class में हमने वो सारा देख देख लिया था particular vulnerable tribe, tribes of Andaman and Nicobar. Yes, we have completed that thing. बचा हुआ आज हो जाएगा फिर एक टॉपिक और बचेगा ये वाला दिस टॉपिक इज रिलेटेड टू योर सोसाइटी एज वेल एज योर पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंस इंडिया ठीक है चलिए सो दिस रिबेलियन कल्मिनेटेड इन टू द ब्रिटिश पॉलिसी ऑफ आइसोलेशन वॉट इज आइसोलेशन क्लियर टू यू दैट ट्राइबल ट्राइब्स शुड रिमेन इन दी आइसोलेशन नो इंटरवेंशन विल बी मेड ओके ट्राइबल एंड द क्रिएशन ऑफ एक्सक्लूडेड एंड पार्शियली एक्सक्लूडेड एरिया अंडर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1935 क्या है देखते हैं द एक्सक्लूडेड एरिया मेनली कंसिस्टेड द हिली रीजन इन दी नॉर्थ ईस्ट सो दैट एक्सक्लूडेड प्रोविजन बिकेम शेड्यूल सिक्स यस द एक्सक्लूडेड प्रोविजन अंडर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1935 बिकेम शेड्यूल सिक्स रीजन एंड Partially excluded area consisted the tribal tracts in the present day Bihar, Bengal, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, or वो ही जो है वो कैसे बन गए They became scheduled five states. Okay? ये दिया हुआ है यहां पर आंध्र प्रदेश में कौन कौन सा पार्ट है कौन कौन सा शेड्यूल एरिया है ये सारी लिस्ट है गुजरात में सूरत भरूच दधंग्स वलसाड़ ओके पंच महल्स वडोदरा एटसेट्रा मध्य प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ में झाबुआ मंडला सरगुजा बस्तर धार है ना तो ये सारी लिस्ट है नो नीड टू रिमेम्बर दैट लेकिन दे दिया है ठीक है इसके अलावा सो फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स्थ शेड्यूल हैव बिकम मॉडल्ड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस प्रोविजन व्हिच अलाउड पार्शियली एक्सक्लूडेड एंड एक्सक्लूडेड एरिया अंडर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन सो इफ इन फिल्म्स इट इज आस्क दैट शेड्यूल फाइव एंड शेड्यूल सिक्स इज बोर्ड फ्रॉम विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव ओके इन पॉलिटी यू विल रीड दैट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव स्ट्रक्चर इंटायर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया और इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज डायरेक्टली बोर्ड फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दैट ओके नेक्स्ट द गाइडिंग नॉर्म फॉर डिक्लेरिंग एन एरिया ऑफ शेड्यूल एरिया इंक्लूड प्री पॉन्डरेंस ऑफ ट्राइबल पॉपुलेशन कॉम्पैक्टनेस ऑफ एरिया वाइबल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव यूनिट लाइक डिस्ट्रिक्ट और ब्लॉक और इकोनॉमिक बैकवर्डनेस एट प्रेजेंट टेन स्टेट्स हैव सच शेड्यूल एरिया शेड्यूल एरिया मीन्स अंडर शेड्यूल फाइव ओके याद रखना ये टेन स्टेट्स कौन कौन से हैं ठीक है कैसे याद कर लोगे मध्य प्रदेश और उसके सारे नेबरिंग स्टेट्स मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र गुजरात राजस्थान छत्तीसगढ़ एक्सेप्ट यूपी यूपी नहीं है ठीक है देन ओडिशा झारखंड 
and Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and last one is Himachal Pradesh. Okay. Next, huh. they have Article 244.1, fifth schedule of the Constitution of India. The tribes advisory council shall be established in each state having schedule area therein. And if the president so direct also any state having scheduled tribe but not scheduled areas therein, that they have set up in the states consisting of not more than 20 members of which three-fourths shall be the tribal MLAs of the state. Basically, they are saying that in Schedule 5 area, Tribal Advisory Council will be established. And Tribal Advisory Council is a constitutional body. Yes, it, it is mentioned in Article 244A. And this Tribal Advisory Council will be having 20 members, out of which three-fourths shall be the tribal MLAs of the state done with this next tribal advisory council provide advice pertaining to the welfare and advancement of scheduled tribe in these state the government subject the governor subject to the approval of the central government shall make a regulation for the allotment and transfer of the land among the members of STs, the governor shall also regulate the business of money lender schedule area. The governor may direct the particular act of parliament of state legislature shall not apply or apply with the modification to such areas. Uh, another asymmetrical federalism that governor may direct that particular act of parliament of state legislature sh shall not apply to the such areas or if applying applying with some modification so you were asking the implementation of ucc so governor can direct that this particular ucc will not be applicable in this particular area suppose in the bastar area yes the ucc will not be applicable or if applicable it will be applicable with certain modification okay Autonomy hui ya nahi hui? Yes? Okay. Next. Schedule areas. The government has the jurisdiction for the management of schedule area, union government, and schedule tribe according to 339 of the Indian constitution. Now, the expression schedule area means such area of the president may by order declare to the schedule area. Okay. So, areas are present in the a state of Madhya Pradesh or a state of Rajasthan, but that schedule area is declared by whom? President by an order. Yes, it is written in the constitution. Ye prelims ke kaam ka hai. Hai na? That schedule area is declared by whom? President. The president may any time by order direct that the whole or any specific part of the schedule area shall cease to be a scheduled area or part of an area increase the area of any scheduled area in the state after consultation with the governor of the state alter but only by way of ratification of boundary any scheduled area matlab ye hai that president can increase or decrease the size of that scheduled area any time with the consultation of governor or president can denotify that area as a scheduled area ये कहने का मतलब है, okay? On any alternation of the boundary of the state or any admission into the union or establishment of the new state, declare any territory not previously included in any state to be or to form the part of the schedule area, okay? Legal language है, थोड़ी सी tough है, yes? But questions are asked from such language, so we have to read it. There is no option for you. No. You are not required to write the same language. But for prelims, you should read such language. Then they, you can solve the typical type of question. Okay? In a mains examination, you just focus on the keywords. Like tribal advisory council, president may by order. Bas, itna baaki apni language likho. Jo likhna hai. Thik hai? No. It is up to the president. That union government has the jurisdiction for the management. Okay. Now, Schedule 5, 
फिफ्थ ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्राइटेरिया वन कमीशन वॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड देभार कमीशन विच लेट डाउन द फॉलोइंग क्राइटेरिया फॉर डिक्लेरिंग एनी एरिया एज ए शेड्यूल एरिया फर्स्ट वन इज प्री पॉन्डरेंस ऑफ ट्राइबल पॉपुलेशन सेकेंड वन इज कॉम्पैक्टनेस एंड रीजनेबल साइज अंडर डेवलप्ड नेचर ऑफ द एरिया एंड मार्क द डिस्पैरिटी इन इकोनॉमिक स्टैंडर्ड एंड पीपल एज कंपेयर टू दी नेबरिंग एरियाज सो सच एरियाज कैन बी डिक्लेयर एज दी ट्राइबल एरियाज विच कमीशन इज दिस देभार कमीशन okay in society paper you will read one more commission that is ab isko kya padhte hain wo padh lena aap ha theek hai zaza commission theek hai zaza commission bahut important hai society wale part mein issues kya hai inme dekh lo issues first one is tribal advisory council do not have much power as the autonomous district council of the sixth schedule area so in schedule 5 areas tribal advisory councils are there in schedule 6 area autonomous district councils are there so in schedule 5 areas tribal advisory council tac do not enjoy much autonomy there is no clarity on the composition of tac because three fourth members to clear hai yes they are the tribal mls of the state legislative assembly but what about one fourth member this is the issue discretionary power of the governor under the provision of the fifth schedule then encroachment of the tribal land it is the big issue it does not provide adequate protection against the encroachment of tribal land by non tribe and sometimes the regulation governing the function of tac are framed by the state government rather than the governor which has allowed the political parties or power to take over these bodies so some of the issues faced by fifth schedule area थोड़ा बहुत क्लियर हुआ वट आर द फिफ्थ शेड्यूल एरिया टेन स्टेट आर हैविंग फिफ्थ शेड्यूल एरिया ओके हु इज द ऑथोरिटी टू डिक्लेयर एनी एरिया एज ए फिफ्थ शेड्यूल एरिया वट आर द स्पेशल फीचर्स ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल विल बी देर यस वट इज द कंपोजिशन ऑफ ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल इट इज क्लियर यस इट इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी यस इट इज क्लियर ओके बट देर आर सर्टेन नेगेटिव सोल्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड दैट ठीक है दिस इज ऑल अबाउट शेड्यूल फाइव एरिया ओके तो आपका पॉलिटिकल स्टेटिक पार्ट भी कंप्लीट हो गया ठीक है नाउ सेकेंड शेड्यूल सिक्स एरिया शेड्यूल सिक्स एरिया मीन्स आसाम मेघालय त्रिपुरा मिजोरम फोर स्टेट ओके सो एप्लीकेबल टू ऑफिशियली कॉल ट्राइबल एरिया इन द स्टेट ऑफ आसाम मेघालय त्रिपुरा एंड मिजोरम टेन सच ट्राइबल एरिया आर प्रेजेंट इन दी फोर स्टेट और यहाँ पे क्या है ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल वहां पे क्या था ट्राइबली ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल बट वी डिस्कस्ड दैट ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल आर नॉट इंजॉइंग दैट डिग्री ऑफ ऑटोनोमी दैट आर एंजॉयड बाय ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल दे आर फॉर्म्ड इन दिस ट्राइबल एरिया एडीसी शेल कंसिस्ट थर्टी मेंबर यहाँ पे कितना था ADC will be having 30 members not more than 4 are nominated by governor of the state and rest are elected by the people usme kya tha tribal advisory council 3/4 members are the members of legislative assembly but uh, autonomous district council will be having members who are directly elected by the people iske paas hogi zyada power those who are directly elected simple hai yes adc shall have power to make laws with respect to the use and management of the land that power was not enjoyed by tac then regulate shifting cultivation why because shifting cul uh, cultivation is prevalent in the northeastern region so regulate shifting cultivation inheritance of property marriage divorce social custom etc and these laws take effect after the approval by the governor which means it, uh, autonomous district councils are enjoying the power of legislature as well the power of tribal advisory council was advisory in nature but autonomous district councils are making laws as well zyada power hai zyada autonomy hai 
for all such matters the laws by the state legislature will not be applicable in this tribal areas unless extended by the adc so if adc is approving any law of the state legislature then particular law will be applicable in those areas otherwise not be applicable the adcs are empowered to establish and manage primary schools dispensary road waterways in the district ye power kahan thi tac ke paas mein nahi thi na more power they can assess and collect the land revenue yes they are having financial resources at their disposal they can grant licenses or leases for the extraction of mineral yahan se bhi paisa aayega yes then the adcs are empowered to constitute village and district council courts for the trial of suits cases where the practice where the parties to the dispute belong to the sts and sts within the district so adcs are having legislative power adcs are having executive power collection of land revenue and adcs are having judicial powers as well more degree of autonomy yes that degree of autonomies are not enjoyed by tribal advisory council thus the tribal areas include within the sixth schedule enjoy greater autonomy yes these are the 10 areas aur unke liye alag alag council bani hai in assam there were three council in meghalaya three mizoram three and one in tripura name of the councils present in assam Bodoland Territorial Council. We have discussed that. Yes, North Kachar Hill Autonomous Council and Kerbi Anglong Autonomous Council. Okay, Meghalaya, Garo Khasi Jentia. Sab ko pata hi hai. Garo Khasi Jentia. In Mizoram, Chakma, Lai and Mara. Chakma Autonomous District Council, Lai Autonomous District Council and Mara Autonomous District Council. And the last one is Tripura Tribal Area Autonomous District Council. so these are the 10 tribal areas present under schedule 6 and present in the four states yes so under schedule 5 10 states are there under schedule 6 10 autonomous district councils are there batao ab jaldi se kon kon sa hai rat gaya hoga sabko who are the 30 members in autonomous district council कौन होंगे इलेक्टेड मेंबर फ्रॉम दैट स्टेट वेरी सिंपल और नॉट फ्रॉम दैट स्टेट फ्रॉम दैट पर्टिकुलर रीजन इफ बोडोलैंड टेरिटोरियल काउंसिल इज प्रेजेंट इन द कोकराझार रीजन ऑफ आसाम सो ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल ऑफ कोकराझार रीजन विल बी हैविंग दोस 30 मेंबर्स इलेक्टेड फ्रॉम दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया सिंपल है अरे यस और नो है ना वो और कहीं से बांग्लादेश से थोड़ी ना होंगे वो उस पर्टिकुलर रीजन से होंगे जहां की वो काउंसिल है इलेक्टेड मेंबर यस इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स हैं बताओ सो शेड्यूल फाइव के टेन स्टेट्स के नाम बताओ ठीक है एंड व्हाट आर द नेम नेम्स ऑफ दो टेन ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल मेघालय इट इज वेरी सिंपल गारो खासी जयंतिया मिजोरम चकमा लाई मारा ओके एंड आसाम बोडोलैंड नॉर्थ कचार एंड काबी आंगलोंग ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी व्हाट इज द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल ट्वेंटी मेंबर्स थ्री फोर्थ मेंबर्स आर दी ट्राइबल एम एल एस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टेट यस tribal advisory council is having advisory function yes more advisory in nature autonomous district council how many members 30 members out of which four are nominated by the governor and other 26 remaining 26 are nominated by sorry elected by people okay which one is having greater power why because autonomous district council is having legislative power executive power judiciary power yes so it is more powerful more autonomous that is why ladakh is demanding schedule 6 status not schedule 
five status. Is it clear now? Because Ladakh is demanding that Ladakh Autonomous District Council should be established. So that we, sh we will also enjoy executive power, legislative power and judicial power. Samaj mein aap? Hai na? <coughs> Wapas se naam batao. 10 Autonomous District Council. Meghalaya. Gabo Khasi Jentia. Assam. North Kachar. Bodoland. Karabi Anglong. Mizoram. Lai, Mara and Chakma. Yes. And the last one is Tripura. Very good. Okay. Issues faced by ADCs. Kya kya issues hai? Limited funding. ADCs often suffer from inadequate financial resources. Dependent on the state and central government. Simple, simple. Hai? Administrative overlap. Conflict of authority. There are frequent conflict between state government and ADC. Why? Because the state government is also having executive power and legislative power. And the same power, same power is enjoyed by ADC. Conflict of interest. Conflict hoga? overlapping hogi authority. Lack of clear demarcation. Limited administrative capacity. Many ADCs lack necessity, necessary administrative capacity, skilled personnel to effectively manage the functions. Bureaucratic inefficiency. Woi sara hai. Dekh lena ek baar. Simple, simple se hai yaan pe. Ab ek or cheez hai. Mena isme include kar di hai. Wholesome topic ka discussion. That is PESA Act. What is this PESA? Naam mei kliya hai. Panchayat extension in schedule area. So first thing is. What is Panchayat? What is Panchayat? Local government in the villages. Are they constitutional body? Yes. 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. Panchayati Raj Institution. Okay. Gram Panchayat at village level. Then Janpat Panchayat and Jilla Panchayat. Okay. Local self-government. But the point is in schedule area. Again. One size fit to all approach. Is not applicable. The same Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam cannot be extended in that schedule area. Governor, schedule 5 mein humne padha tha, that governor may direct that any legislation of the state or union may not applicable in the schedule area or if applicable, then with certain modification. Okay, so Panchayati Raj institution are established by Established by 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. But it is the state list subject. Government of India provided model framework for that. That model framework is followed by state government. And they passed their own Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam. Like Uttar Pradesh government passed Uttar Pradesh Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam. Okay. That particular thing established Panchayati Raj institution in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh government passed Madhya Pradesh Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam. Uttar Pradesh mein to schedule area hai nahi, but Madhya Pradesh is having schedule area. Now Madhya Pradesh Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam is not applicable in the schedule area. That is schedule 5. But democratic decentralization is needed. Democratic decentralization is needed. Grassroot level democracy is needed. Yes. So, to extend the provision of Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam in those areas where it is not applicable, PESA Act was passed. Now, make clear a Panchayat Extension in Schedule Area Act 1996. Is it clear? Now, first question What is the need to have Panchayats? So, are you saying that local problems are not solved by government? Yes. Local resources are available, local manpower are available, local methods to tackle any issue. Yes, local methods are available. Like Odisha is having the history of cyclone. Yes, so people of, of Odisha are more equipped with the techniques and disaster management techniques we can say. 
टू टेकल द साइक्लोन देन द पीपल ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ यस और नो और द पीपल ऑफ न्यू डेली सो न्यू डेली गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट मेक इफेक्टिव स्ट्रेटेजी टू टेकल साइक्लोन इन ओडिशा यस सो सच थिंग्स शुड बी मेड और सच पॉलिसी शुड बी मेड बाय द पीपल ऑफ ओडिशा दैट इज वाई दे नीड सम पावर एंड पावर कैन बी गिवन वाई आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड दैट इज वाई वी आर हैविंग द मॉडल ऑफ पंचायती राज इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट इज डेमोक्रेटिक डी सेंट्रलाइजेशन सेंट्रलाइजेशन मीन्स ओनली वन ऑथोरिटी इज मेकिंग ऑल द लॉज डी सेंट्रलाइजेशन मीन्स एट वेरियस लेवल पावर आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एंड दो लेवल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आर मेकिंग पॉलिसीज एंड प्रोग्राम्स यू गॉट द आइडिया दैट इज वाई लोकल गवर्नमेंट आर नीडेड अदर बेनिफिट ऑफ हैविंग लोकल गवर्नमेंट कैसे पार्टिसिपेटिव डेमोक्रेसी कैसे यस पीपल आर डायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व ओके वेन यू वोटेड फॉर यूर एम पीस आपने कभी उनको देखा भी नहीं होगा यस दे मे नॉट हैव विजिटेड इन यूर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी फॉर एटलीस्ट वन टाइम ऑनली यस बट यू आर लिविंग नियर टू योर सरपंच और वार्ड मेंबर Yes, so more involvement will be there, more sense of ownership will be there, more participation will be there. More participation means more degree of accountability. Those sarpanch or ward member will be more accountable towards you. Yes, that will lead to the model of good governance. So these are all concepts that are mutually interconnected. We will discuss sometimes, but right now, Paisa Act, Panchayat. प्रोविजन ऑफ पंचायत इन शेड्यूल एरिया 1996 कॉमनली नोन एज पेसा एक्ट क्या है पर्पस पर्पस एंड स्कोप द पेसा एक्ट एम्स टू एनकरेज सेल्फ गवर्ने सेल्फ गवर्नेंस थ्रू द ट्रेडिशनल ग्राम सभा विलेज असेंबली फॉर द पीपल लिविंग इन द शेड्यूल एरिया विच आर प्री डोमिनेटली इन हेबिटेड बाय ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी वॉट इज ग्राम सभा Yes, all the adult members of that village, those who are the voters, constitute Gram Sabha. Yes, Schedule area. These areas are identified under fifth schedule of the Indian Constitution and found in the ten states. Extension of Panchayat. The Act extended to the provision of Part Ten of the Constitution to the Schedule area with the certain exemption and modification. Why? Because Governor may direct. That certain modification and exemption should be made, then Panchayati Raj Adhiniyam will be implemented. ठीक है? ये हो गया. Gram Sabha empowerment. It grants significant powers to Gram Sabha. Approval of plan, program, project for social economic development before implementation. Identification and selection of beneficiaries. Certification of utilization of panch for panchayat. Customary laws and practice. State legislation on panchayat must be consonant with the customary laws, social, religious practice, traditional management practice of the community resources. Because tribe tribes are residing in those areas, and you have to preserve their customary laws, practices, etc. Okay, resource management, reservation of seats. Look at this one. Okay, impact. What is empowerment? Pesa is seen as a significant impact, a significant step towards the empowering of tribal community. For the whole class, we are discussing empowerment of tribal community via various provision. One of this provision is Pesa. This is the legal provision. Uh, implementation issue. Despite the potential, uh, the implementation of Pesa has faced challenges, including lack of awareness, inadequate administrative support, reluctance of state government to publish necessary rule. Madhya Pradesh is having largest tribal population in India. Are you aware of this fact? But in Madhya Pradesh, Pesa Act has been recently implemented in 2022. Okay, so state governments are reluctant to implement Pesa Act, despite of having largest tribal population in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Pesa Act was uh, implemented in the month of November 2022. Why? सबसे ज्यादा है ना वहां पे तो लगाना चाहिए था पैसा एक्ट वॉज ब्रॉट इन 1996 बट इट वॉज इंप्लीमेंटेड इन 2022 थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू बाई दिस इज दू बिग इशू ओके 
state governments are reluctant cultural preservation the act helps to preserve the cultural identity ye theek hai sare same hi point hai aap dekh sakte ho inko theek hai kyunki inko dekhne jayenge to dikkat ho jayegi time ho gaya hai aaj ka hamara notable success stories of implementation of pesa one is mendha lekha village of maharashtra kya hua wahan par maharashtra is having scheduled five areas yes one success story should be written whenever paisa act is asked in examination empowerment through gram sabha mendha lekha a tribal village in gad chiroli district gad chiroli district you know that gad chiroli district is the left wing extremism affected district that naxal affected district of maharashtra hai na gad chiroli gad hai matlab ek wahan pe theek hai गढ़ का मतलब ये नहीं है वहां पे नक्सल्स का गढ़ है है ना फुट होल्ड है वहां पे बहुत ज्यादा वो तो नाम गढ़ है क्यों है मुझे नहीं पता हैज इफेक्टिवली यूटिलाइज द पावर्स ग्रांटेड अंडर पैसा द ग्राम सभा हियर हैज टेकन कंट्रोल ऑफ द लोकल रिसोर्सेज इंक्लूडिंग फॉरेस्ट एंड हैज बिन इन्वॉल्व इन द डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस रिलेटेड टू द डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट forest right the village successfully claimed and community forest right allowing them to manage and benefit from the forest resources so just to remember the name menda lekha village of maharashtra okay this should be your case study niyamgiri hills odisha ye to naam bahut suna hoga aapne niyamgiri famous protest of niyamgiri and then it will lead to the cancellation of many project because niyamgiri hill is the mineral rich area mining projects were sanctioned niyamgiri hills और वहां पर क्या स्टार्ट हुआ प्रोटेस्ट स्टार्टेड इन नियम हिल्स ट्राइबल देर वॉज अ थ्रेट दैट लैक्स ऑफ ट्राइबल्स विल बी डिस्प्लेस्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दोज माइनिंग प्रोजेक्ट बट बिकॉज ऑफ द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ एनजीओ दो प्रोजेक्ट वर नॉट इंप्लीमेंटेड प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ ट्राइबल राइट्स द डोंगरिया कोंड दिस इज दर्टिकुलर वर्नरेबल ट्राइब डोंगरिया कोंड कम्युनिटी ट्राइब in the niyamgiri hills used the provision of paisa to protect their land and resources from the mining activity the gram sabha in the region played a crucial role in the rejecting mining proposal okay thereby safeguarding that their traditional land and legal victory this case is often cited as the landmark victory for tribal rights and self governance under the paisa okay just remember this why case studies are important for every topic for every subject at least one case study should be remembered because if question is asked in 15 mark segment then you will be having three pages to write yes in three pages yahan pe to ho gaya introduction then first heading 1 2 3 4 points तीन पेज भरने ग्यारह मिनट में नॉट पॉसिबल भराएंगे ही नहीं तो फिर क्या केस स्टडी उठाएंगे यहां एक बॉक्स बनाएंगे इतना बड़ा यहां पे लिखेंगे केस स्टडी नियम गिरी हिल्स ऑक्यूपाई हुआ स्पेस यस फिर कुछ और हुआ तो फ्लो फ्लो चार्ट बना देंगे फिर कुछ और हुआ तो कहीं पे मैप बना देंगे ओके दीज आर द टेक्टिक्स सो दैट द एंटायर स्पेस विल बी यूटिलाइज अदरवाइज इट इज प्रैक्टिकली इम्पॉसिबल टू राइट थ्री पेजेस इन इलेवन मिनट्स लिख ही नहीं पाओगे सोचना भी तो है है ना तो वो होता नहीं है फॉर फिफ्टीन मार्कर डायग्राम फ्लो चार्ट केस स्टडीज याद होना चाहिए ये लिखोगे तभी वो 15 मार्कर उसकी पूरी स्पेस फिल होगी नहीं तो नहीं हो पाएगी ठीक है इसलिए कर लेना याद कोची और झारखंड पढ़ लेना ये भी नाउ टैक्स क्रैक डाउन लिंक्स एनजीओ टू फॉरेन फंडिंग दिस इज अ बिग इश्यू वट आर द एनजीओ एंड वाई दे आर इन्वॉल्व इन दी एंटी नेशनल एक्टिविटीज NGOs are working for social yes 
आर दे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी लीगल बॉडी यस यस दे आर लीगल बॉडीज दे आर रजिस्टर्ड ओके दे आर लीगल बॉडीज सो एनजीओज आर द पार्ट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट नो एनजीओज आर द पार्ट ऑफ मार्केट नो 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 इन गवर्नेंस मॉडल देर आर थ्री स्टेक होल्डर वन इज स्टेट और गवर्नमेंट अनदर वन इज मार्केट एंड लास्ट वन इज सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्टेट मार्केट एंड सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वट इज गवर्नेंस फर्स्ट थिंग देन वी विल डिस्कस एनजीओ नाउ वी हैव फोर्टी मिनिट्स इनफ टाइम वी कैन डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक फॉर एंटाइवेटी बताइए वट इज गवर्नेंस and what is government basu now you should give the answer government is the ruling body okay government is the institutional structure and governance is the process okay government is the institutional structure the people who are exercising the authority the institution which is exercising the authority is the government yes lok sabha rajya sabha judiciary collectorate office yes these are the part of government institution people bodies government is it okay and what is the government uh, governance governance is the process what is the process process of delivering goods and services process of delivering many thing to the people because we are having a welfare state yes welfare state it is the duty of the government to fulfill certain obligations which are mentioned in the dpsp yes like right to food we all have a right to food it is the duty of the government to fulfill that particular thing those who cannot afford food yes or no so the delivery of goods and services is nothing but the governance okay just after independence we followed a particular model that is state controlled model yes state was controlling every aspect delivery of goods and services state will be controlling everything yes so from 1947 to 1991 state was controlling every aspect of governance can we say this yes states were state was delivering goods state was delivering services like bsnl bsnl tha mtnl tha no jio no airtel no vodafone no idea yes state was delivering services state was delivering goods as well yes government established many psus to deliver goods as well although private players were there but large segment of the governance was controlled by government only or state we can say are you agree with me so from 1947 up to 1991 till the liberalization privatization and globalization era the governance segment was controlled by state is it okay after 1991 we adopted new economic policy liberalized economy we coupled our economy with the world economy and we started privatization as well and the outcome of that liberalization and privatization was globalization yes in that particular era after 1991 many of the things were provided by market forces as well yes market forces goods services ye sara jo bhi material hai it is provided by market yes or no services vodafone yes airtel jio so services goods provided by market 
So in the process of governance, who started playing role? Market forces also started playing role. So in this era, after 1991 up to now, government and market forces, both are controlling the governance process. Yeah, both are participating in the governance process. Aisa nahi hua that uh, government retreated from the governance. Yes, BSNL is still there. Government is also providing many of the goods and services. Many public schools are there. Yes, many colleges are there. Government hospitals are there. So government is also present in the field of governance. Private players or market forces are also present. They both are providing. But still, many of the people are not having basic minimum necessities. Yes, many of the people are outside of the school. Many of the people are not having health facility. Yes, many of the people are not having enough drinking water to drink. Or if they are having drinking water, it is polluted. Yes, so basic minimum necessities are still denied to many people. Despite of having presence of a state as well as market forces. Okay. So who will fill this particular gap? Yes. So those gaps are filled by civil society organization. Okay. This is the three model, uh, three point factor of governance model. Okay. Where a state from 1947 to 1991, a state was dom dominating the governance process. That is, a state was delivering everything. Then, market forces came. Now, market forces along with the state started delivering goods and services. But still, many people are left in this developmental process. Now, who will deliver those things? Civil society organization. I'm not saying that civil society organization was not delivering services in this era. They were delivering. But they were, their presence were insignificant. Yes, but after 1991, their presence increased significantly because liberalization, privatization, outcome was globalization. Now foreign NGOs also started entering in India. Okay, and they were also given free hand. Yes, Amnesty International, Greenpeace, Red Cross. You got the idea? So they were also given free hand to deliver goods and services and to complement and supplement the effort of government as well as the effort of private play. Yes, many of the uh, private players like Geo Foundation of Ambani, they are providing services along with the collaboration with uh, many NGOs. Yes, so they are also delivering services. You got the idea? So basically, delivery of goods and services is nothing but the part of governance. So in entire polity, we discuss government. But in governance chapter, we discuss that delivery of services. In this delivery of services, many things come. Like policy making. One policy making will be, I am making a particular policy. Yes. I'm not taking care of the needs of her or the needs of many people. One is participatory decision making. Different hogi. Participatory de decision making is nothing but the part of good governance. So earlier governance was there. But now the model of governance has changed from governance to good governance. From centralized governance to participatory governance, where many people are involved and they are giving their opinion and according to those opinion, they are shaping the government policies and programs. And in that process, NGOs are also involved. In fact, NGOs are playing significant role in that particular process. Background is clear. Okay. So in this background, many of the NGOs are misusing the fund that they are getting from private players or foreign funding. They are misusing those funds and they are involved in the anti-India activity. 
these are the allegation these are the charges on ngos okay for good governance they are involved they are given free hand that you should also provide education you should also provide health facility you should also take care of those elderly people many of the ngos are in involved in taking care of elderly people yes those deserted elderly people yes those who are abandoned by their own family members and government uh, government is failed to establish shelter homes for them so who are taking care of them ngos but in the name of those yes those social activities they are doing some other works as well this is the news okay so tax crackdown links ngos to foreign funding and joint agendas this is the report that was in the news kya hai report dekh lete hain the ngos pursued litigation stalling economic and development projects of country including those of adani group and jsw more than 75% of funding of four ngos during five year period came from abroad which is shaping the activities in india okay these are the allegation the president of one ngo is the shareholder of another as well these are among the key allegation mainly linking the process and personal listed by the income tax department following its crackdown of five major ngos including country's premier think tank center for policy research bahut baar naam suna hoga aapne cpr center for policy research and one of the most famous oxfam oxfam ki kaun si aati hai report inequality report yes that in india 1% of the top which are controlling 56% of the total wealth hai na yahi hai na report okay wo oxfam and center for so they are involved in the anti india activity now news item to ho gaya khatam yes as usual iske baad hoti hai start again static part so what have ngos ngos refers to not for profit organization that have engaged in public service based on ethical cultural social political religious philanthropic consideration in india they can be formed as society registration act trust act or charitable companies act is it clear civil society organization सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कैन हैव मेनी थिंग्स एनजीओस प्रेशर ग्रुप्स सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स चैरिटेबल इंस्टीट्यूट यस यू कैन से व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप एज वेल दे आर ऑल्सो वन टाइप ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी एक्टिविज्म यस whatsapp group or telegram group they can also be they are not registered if they will be registered then they will be a legal entity okay <clears throat> one more thing what are the three pillars of democracy three pillars of democracy executive legislative and judiciary these are known as three pillars of democracy what was the fourth pillar of democracy they are known as fifth pillar of democracy they are known as fifth pillar why these are three pillars because one is checking the misuse of powers of others yes judiciary is checking the misuse of power by executive and legislature is it okay if these three are not responding and they are having some kind of collaboration with each other and three of them are involved in the misuse of power then who will highlight those abuse of power media fourth pillar but we know that yes the condition of media is not good in india yes so they also purchase the media then who will 
counter the uh, those uh, incidents of misuse of power civil society organization okay pressure groups pressure groups mein bahut kuch aayega like farmers union suna hai naam yes they concluded one of the most famous non violent protest yes and because of that government of india repealed those three farm laws student union hai na trade union student union trade union isme sab aa jayega lawyers union doctors union hai na sab aa jayega isme so they are the part of pressure groups so civil society organization is the umbrella term when nobody is listening then civil society organization be it pressure group or ngos will listen to you bol sakte hain aisa so they are the important part of your polity okay entire political system theek hai itna clear ho gaya again so ngos are legal entity they can be registered under society registration act or trust act or charitable companies act recently one act which is known as fcra was amended was, uh, what is fcra foreign contribution regulation act ngos which are working in india can receive foreign fund as well for charitable purposes simple baat hai foreign fund aur to kuch kaam ke liye use nahi hoga okay so ngos which are working in india they can receive foreign fund as well why because many of the ngos are foreign ngos they cannot carry out their function without the support of foreign funding kyunki unki main funding ka source kahan par hai foreign mein that is why fcra was passed but recently fcra was amended and with respect to the foreign funding regulations were tightened थोड़ा सा उसको स्ट्रिक्ट कर दिया रीजन बिकॉज ऑफ द अलेज इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ फॉरन फंडेड एनजीओ इन एंटी इंडिया एक्टिविटी ओके उसके बारे में ये आर्टिकल है क्या क्या है इंक्रीज अमाउंट ऑफ एग्जेम्शन दैट इज इट अलाउज इंडिया इंडियंस टू रिसीव अप टू टेन लेक इन अयर फ्रॉम रिलेटिव स्टेइंग अब्रोड विदाउट इन्फॉर्मिंग द अथोरिटीज द अवेलियर लिमिट वॉज वन लैक ये तो थोड़ा बढ़ा दिया है यहाँ पे increased time limit it has given individual and organization 45 days okay for application of obtaining registration or prior permission of fcra fund some of the uh, features points hai wo kahan chala gaya fcra ke aur features yahi hai ye significance wala baad mein dekhenge isko slide upar niche ho gayi एक्सटेंडेड आर्म ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ये भी सिग्निफिकेंस ही है एफ सी आर है इट इज द लॉ इनेक्टेड बाई पार्लियामेंट टू रेगुलेट द फॉरन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन और फॉरन डोनेशन प्रोवाइडेड बाई सर्टेन इंडिविजुअल और एसोसिएशन टू एनजीओ एंड अदर्स विद इन द इंडिया लाइक बिल्स बिल एंड मिलिंडा गेट्स फाउंडेशन इज फंडिंग मेनी एनजीओ इन इंडिया ओके सो दैट फंडिंग इज रेगुलेटेड बाई एफ सी आर ए द ओरिजिनल एक्ट वॉज passed in 1976 majorly modified in 2010 the act aims to prevent the foreign organization from influencing first one is electoral politics in india second social political economic or religious discussion in india or for wrong purpose any activities detrimental to the public interest religious discussion many of the ngos like peta peta is not indian ngo peta filed a petition in supreme court one of the most famous petition naam yaad hai jaldi kattu you are not aware of jaldi kattu yes jaldi kattu is the jaldi kattu is the religious or we can say cultural practices of the state of tamil nadu it is a one type of a sport which involved bull taming bull bull taming sport hai okay in which uh, it involved physical harm to both bull as well as the people who are playing that sport so peta filed a petition in supreme court and supreme court banned this particular practice okay 
so because of the foreign funded ngos the people of Tam tamil nadu said that our cultural and religious practice is threatened because supreme court banned that particular practice so the practice which is thousand year old practice according to the people of tamil nadu jaldi kattu was banned baad mein bahut protest hua then supreme court allowed that practice theek hai but peta was involved in that practice okay so the act aims to prevent the foreign organization from influencing electoral politics socio political economic and religious discussion in india for wrong purpose and activities detrimental to the public interest the act falls under the purview of ministry of home affair one more act is there which is known as fema kabhi news mein aayega then we will discuss foreign exchange management act which is under the purview of ministry of finance okay abhi aaj ka topic wo hai nahi fcr hai foreign contribution means the donation delivery or transfer made by any foreign source or article being the article given to a person as a gift or his or her personal use the market value which is not more than 1 lakh rupee currency or security un sab ko kya kahenge foreign donation kahenge contribution made by the citizen of india living in another country which means nris from his or her personal saving through the normal banking challenge will not be treated as a foreign contribution so funding made by nris will not be considered as a foreign contribution okay any person can receive foreign contribution provided the person has a definite culture economic educational religious or social program the person must obtain fcr registration this is compulsory if you want to jaise ngos to bahut sare hain lakhon ki sankhya mein ngos but not all the ngos are having fcr license and if they are not having fcr license which means they cannot receive foreign funding if you want to receive foreign funding then you should have fcr license okay fcr registration permission from the central government and the person include an individual hindu undivided family and association company registered under section 8 of the companies act the foreign contribution received has to be utilized only for the purpose for which it has been received this is an important aspect if you are receiving your funding for educational purpose then you should not use that particular funding for some other purpose like funding the naxalites yes many of the ngos are involved in that also okay many of the ngos are involved in the conversion hai na one of the most famous ngo kya naam hai moc missionaries of charity kiska hai ye one of the most famous personality mother teresa yes missionary missionaries of charity mother teresa fcr license was cancelled for this particular iska bhi license cancel hua tha reason involved in the conversion activity theek hai received and not more than 20% of the foreign contribution received in a financial year can be utilized to defray the administrative expense the fcr requires every person or ngo seeking to receive foreign donation open a bank account for the receipt of the foreign fund in the state bank of india new delhi usme bhi ek specific branch hai if you want to receive foreign funding whether you are registered in the state of tamil nadu or in the state of chatisgarh in the basta region if you want to receive foreign funding then you should come new delhi visit that particular branch which is designated by ministry of home and open fcr account there only you got the idea why why this much restriction because of the illegal activities of ngos okay then transfer of foreign contribution under the act foreign contribution 
कैन नॉट बी ट्रांसफर टू एनी अदर पर्सन अनलेस सच पर्सन इज ऑल्सो रजिस्टर्ड फॉर दैट पर्पज इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट माई एनजीओ इज रजिस्टर्ड एंड रिसीविंग द फॉरन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड आई एम ट्रांसफरिंग दिस फंड टू यू ले जा ऐसा नहीं होगा समझ गए बात को ठीक है द अमेंडमेंट ऑल्सो फॉर बिट सब ग्रांटिंग बाय एनजीओ टू द स्मॉलर एनजीओ ओके लाइक बिल एंड क्या है वो बिल एंड मिलिंडा गेट्स फाउंडेशन इज रिसीविंग फॉरन फंडिंग ओके बट बिल एंड मिलिंडा गेट फाउंडेशन कैन नॉट ट्रांसफर दिस फंडिंग टू माई एनजीओ माई पर्टिकुलर एनजीओ इज ए स्मॉलर एनजीओ so that transfer is not possible hai na ye likha hua hai so first thing single fcr account should be opened kahan par specific branch of sbi in new delhi second sub funding is not allowed hai na to the smaller ngo the registration under fcr it is mandatory second applicant should not be fictitious or benami or should not have been prosecuted or convicted for indulging in the activities aimed at kya likha hua hai through the inducement or force inducement chawal de do hai na tribes ke sath mein yahi hua hai hai na so inducement or by force either directly or indirectly from one religious faith to another the registration is initially valid for Five years and it can be renewed subsequently if they comply with all the norms. Otherwise, it will be suspended or cancelled. Registration can be cancelled if any inquiry finds a false statement in the application. Once the registration of an NGO is cancelled, it is not eligible for re-registration for ten years. Ah, uh, for how many? Three years. This is an important provision. You got the idea. जो रेगुलेशन से बहुत ज्यादा रिस्ट्रिक्टिव कर दिए गए हैं द मिनिस्ट्री ऑल्सो हैज द पावर टू सस्पेंड एन एनजीओ रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर वन एट्टी डेज पेंडिंग इंक्वायरी एंड कैन फ्रीज ऑल द फंड्स फ्रीज भी कर सकती है ऑल ऑर्डर्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट कैन बी चैलेंज इन दी हाई कोर्ट अ टोटल ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड फोर फाइव सेवन एनजीओ और एसोसिएशन आर प्रेजेंट रजिस्टर्ड अंडर एफ सी आर ए द लाइसेंस ऑफ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड has been cancelled <laughs> government ne kitna tight kiya hai bol abhi kitna out of 22457 20674 have been cancelled and those 6702 are deemed to have expired sirf 2000 ka rakh diya baki sab ka cancel kar diya mass cancellation of fcr why because of the alleged involvement in anti india activity you got the idea to ye bahut news mein raha hai ye kahin pe bhi aap se pooch sakte hain ye trust ke naam diye hue hain ek baar pad lena world movement for democracy in sab ka license cancel hua challenges faced by sabse pehle inka significance dekhte hain significance of ngos empowering marginalized group through financial assistance crowd funding micro finance ssg education providing Access to market skill and development. Example, Seva and Pratham. Pratham का भी आपने नाम सुना है. Pratham is involved for in the field of education, and Seva is involved in the field of skill development and self-employment. है ना? Self-employment Women Association, one of the most famous NGO of India. Self-employed Women Association and Pratham. Okay, so empowerment. of marginalized section introducing innovation in the policy making many right based scheme implemented by the government have been brain child of the ngos for example rti rti ka kisne kiya sir one of the ngos mss okay so rti is the brain child of mss manrega social audit food security act these are the innovative methods okay developed by ngos and later on they are implemented by government okay then extended arm of the government important role in the implementation of government scheme as we have discussed that earlier government was dominating the governance process but now ngos are also involved in that process 
So, important role in the implementation of government scheme in the remotest cover of the country and improve the efficiency of the service delivery is the grassroots level. Akshay Patra Foundation, बहुत नाम सुना होगा. This particular foundation is implementing ये लिखा हुआ है midday meal scheme. Then bridge between government and the citizen, facilitate dialogue, collaboration and effective implementation of development program, assistance and awareness creation. NGOs helps the victims of human rights violation by providing them assistance and advice about their rights and entitlement. For example, Amnesty International and Red Cross. Red Cross has established many hospitals in India. आपने सुना होगा नाम Red Cross का, ठीक है? So these are the significance. Then broaden the government's accountability through good governance tool. Citizen Charter, Social Audit, RTI, PIL, raising the issue of importance such as corruption, manual scavenging, environmental degradation, tri tribal rights, custodial violence, fake encounters, woman child rights, etc. Like PIL fi filed in the Vishaka case, LGBT right, that is NAS Foundation. In fact, that judgment ka hi naam aapne polity mein pada ho, to kya hai? NAS Foundation case. Hai na? उस जजमेंट का ही नाम है नास फाउंडेशन केस वेयर सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिक्लेयर्ड दैट ट्रांसजेंडर इज दी थर्ड जेंडर है ना ट्रांसजेंडर को जो थर्ड जेंडर का दर्जा मिला है वो नास फाउंडेशन केस में ही मिला है आई गेस इन 2012 और 14 ऐसा कुछ है प्रिजर्व कल्चरल राइट्स मेनी एनजीओस वर्क टू प्रिजर्व एंड प्रमोट इंडियास डाइवर्स कल्चर एग्जांपल एसपीआईसी मेके इज दी सोसाइटी फॉर प्रमोटिंग इंडियास क्लासिकल म्यूजिक एंड कल्चर अमंगस्ट द यूथ then environment conservation promotes sustainable practice and raise the awareness about the climate change. Example, Center for Science and Environment and advocating the clean technology and policies. Okay. Now the crux is you will remember all the points. One in the field of education, health, woman right activist. Child right activist, environmental activism. ये तो याद रहेगा. Point ये है कि इनसे related NGOs का नाम याद रखना है. Like Amnesty International is advocating rights of marginalized section. Yes, some of the NGOs are helping government to implement their policies. Example, Akshay Patra Foundation. Some of the NGOs are involved in the policy making. Or some of the important legislations are brainchild of certain NGOs like MSS. Yes, RTI. Hai na? To aise yaad rakhna hai. For each point, you have to substantiate that point with an example. Governance wale jo chapter hai aapka polity mein, which involves many examples. Us mein aap example nahi likhoge, number nahi milenge. Aap kitna bhi point likh do, number nahi milenge. So you have to remember the name of at least 15 to 20 NGOs. If you write a good, uh, if you want to write a good answer. Samaj gai? So FCRA is clear. What is FCRA? If you, if any NGO which is registered in India, if that NGO wants to receive foreign funding, it should have FCRA registration or FCRA license. There are certain conditions attached with FCRA license. What are those conditions? We have discussed. Okay. What are the significance of NGO? We have discussed that. You should remember those names. Then, ये तो सबको याद रहेगा ना यार. Engaging in the क्या है? हाँ, suffering relief activity. Promoting interest of the poor, protecting environment. लेकिन इनसे जुड़े हुए NGOs कौन-कौन से हैं वो याद रखो. Registration हो गया. Challenges. Now, what are the challenges that NGOs are facing? सबसे बड़ा तो FCI वही है. It is the biggest challenge. Twenty out of twenty two thousand NGOs, twenty thousand का license cancel हो गया registration. सबसे बड़ा challenge. So regulatory hurdles, multiple laws, frequently changing government policies. Registration reporting obligation, restriction on foreign funding impedes this smooth implementation of initiative. Over regulation of NGOs, new regulations put excessive condition on NGOs, educational and research institute that have partnership with the foreign entity. Discourage the flow of investment in technology. 
बिकॉज विद द फ्लो ऑफ फॉरेन फंड देर कम्स द फ्लो ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एज वेल स्ट्रिक्ट एफ सी आर ए रूल्स विल इंप्लीमेंट विल इम्पैक्ट द इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज इन द वेरियस सोशल सेक्टर लाइक चाइल्ड हेल्थ रिसर्च एनवायरमेंटल कंजर्वेशन ठीक है नेक्स्ट एक्स्ट्रा कॉस्ट ऑफ कंप्लायंस ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है एज वी डिस्कस्ड दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिसीव फॉर एन फंडिंग देन यू शुड कम टू न्यू डेली फॉर ए स्पेसिफिक ब्रांच फ्रॉम वेयर यू कैन ओपन एन एफ सी आर ए अकाउंट यस देन यू कैन रिसीव फॉर एन फंडिंग बट द पॉइंट इज नाइंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ एफ सी आर ए एनजीओ आर रजिस्टर्ड आउटसाइड दिल्ली ओके एंड विल नाउ हैव टू ओपन अ बैंक अकाउंट इन दी कैपिटल इंक्रीज द कंप्लायस कोस्ट देन प्रोहिबिटिंग पब्लिक सर्वेंट फ्रॉम द रिसीविंग फॉर एन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ये तो सही किया इसमें कोई गलत नहीं है ओके कोई गलत नहीं है दिस कैन एक्सक्लूड अ लार्ज सेक्शन ऑफ पब्लिक स्पिरिटेड इंडिविजुअल किसने बोल दिया सिविल सर्वेंट आर नॉट पब्लिक स्पिरिटेड इंडिविजुअल who fall within the definition of public servant prohibition on transfer of foreign contribution we have discussed that that collaboration between small ngos and social workers with the large ngos and the amendment will effectively push ngos to work in the isolation one big ngo cannot transfer the fund to small ngos which are involved in the same field hai na this is the big criticism okay the next one lowering the administrative expense cap like i am my ngo is receiving foreign fund for uh, providing education to the tribal children yes so i am receiving suppose 10 crore rupees so administrative cost of that particular thing jo bhi mera setup hai uska 1 crore se zyada nahi ho sakta matlab it is the cap uh, क्या बोल दिया यहां पर दिस कैन सीवियरली ये एक कैप बना दी है दैट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कैप एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपेंसेस शुड नॉट बी ग्रेटर देन टेन परसेंट ट्वेंटी है टेन है ट्वेंटी है ओके अवली दैट वॉज फिफ्टी परसेंट दैट फिफ्टी परसेंट कैन बी द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपेंस नाउ इट इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट नॉट टेन परसेंट सॉरी ट्वेंटी परसेंट अवलियर आई कैन स्पेंड 5 crore on administrative expense ghotala hone ka chance zyada tha yes chances of corruption or misuse of fund yes were more but now those chances are reduced but this is also one type of criticism okay so administrative cap this can adversely affect the research activities studies and survey work of ngos power to prohibit a foreign contribution recipient from utilizing or receiving fund may provide a tool in the hands of government to unduly harass certain ngos who seen unfavorably by the ruling dispensation jo bhi government ke khilaf bolega uska license cancel increase the maximum limit for the period of suspension it provides a discretion to the government to keep the fcr registration certificate under suspension for almost वन ईयर नॉट वन ईयर अब तो कितना हो गया तीन साल हो गया ये कुछ डेटा है देख लेना कोई बहुत ज्यादा काम का नहीं है लेकिन याद होना चाहिए इट इज अगेंस्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट कुछ और पॉइंट है अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंटरनेशनल कमीशन ऑफ जुविस्ट न्यू लॉज इज इन इनकम्पेटेबल विद द इंटरनेशनल ऑब्लिगेशन इंडिया ऑन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन इट इज अगेंस्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन इट विल डिस्करेज सोशल वर्क इट इज इनकम्पेटेबल विद द इंटरनेशनल लॉज एंड इट विल be against the indian cultural ethos that is vasudev kutumbakam okay many people are saying that on the one hand we are saying that we you should invest in india like in make in india but on the one hand we are averting the fund which is flowing via ngos okay so many people are saying that it is against the india's cultural ethos that is vasudev kutumbakam so we have discussed the significance of ngos we have discussed challenges with respect to fcra okay so ngos role with respect to governance is clear to you having any doubt or no doubt then have a doubt 
ओके दैट इज फॉरन एडेड एनजीओ आर एक्टिवली स्टॉलिंग डेवलपमेंट किसने कहा है ये इंटेलिजेंस ब्यूरो ठीक है सो वन टॉपिक आई एम ओपनिंग अप ओके समटाइम्स वी विल डिस्कस दैट इन दी विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी पेपर यस ये पार्ट किसका बनता है यहां से गवर्नेंस वाला एंड हो गया इससे ज्यादा नहीं पूछेगा कोई भी दिस मटेरियल इज सफिशियंट फॉर गवर्नेंस पेपर बट This is the particular topic I am opening because we are discussing NGO right now. So many of the NGOs are involved in the anti-India activity, which is hampering economic development of India. And according to IB, one report of the IB is suggesting, क्या है? हाँ, ये ये. That NGOs in India released in June 2014 has been a subject of significant discussion and controversy. The report accused Several foreign-funded NGOs such as Greenpeace, Code Aid, Amnesty, and Action Aid engaging in anti-India activity allegedly hinder India's developmental project. Like Greenpeace involved in the protest which was going on in the state of Tamil Nadu, where Kudan Kulam nuclear power plant. Naam sunaye? Kis kis ne sunaye? Kis ne nahi sunaye? Sab ne sunaye? कुडान कुलम न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट का नाम सुना है बहुत बड़ा पावर प्लांट है ओके इंडिया स्टैब्लिश दैट पावर प्लांट विद द टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर एंड असिस्टेंट विद द रशिया ओके इन द स्टेट ऑफ तमिलनाडु बट ग्रीन पीस इज अलेजली इन्वॉल्व इन दैट प्रोटेस्ट विच वॉज गोइंग ऑन इन तमिलनाडु ओके दैट इज हाईलाइटेड In the IB report, okay, which means foreign NGOs are involved in organizing protest in India, which is not a good thing. That is why FCIV licenses were cancelled. कितनो का किया? Yes. Anti-developmental activity, like the report claims that these NGOs were involved in the protest against nuclear and coal-fired power plants. जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड ऑर्गेनिज्म इसमें भी बहुत सारे लोग इन्वॉल्व हैं है ना लार्ज इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोजेक्ट लाइक पोक्सो एंड वेदांता वेदांता वाला जो प्रोजेक्ट है वेदांत एंड पोक्सो एट अभी हमने डिस्कस किया था इन शेड्यूल सिक्स एरिया नियाम गिरी हिल्स सक्सेस स्टोरी वो वहीं पे था वो प्रोजेक्ट कैंसिल हो गया ओके सो आई बी हाईलाइटेड दैट थिंग ऑन द वन हैंड वी आर citing the example as a success story but on the other hand it is an it has negative aspect as well theek hai foreign influence the report acha ek aur economic impact the estimated that these activities negatively impacted india's economic growth by can you believe this foreign influence the report suggested that these ngos were acting as a tool for foreign policy interest of western government okay this is the report of ib so we will discuss it sometimes with respect to internal security aur ye bhi kaha hai hamare nsa ne kya kaha hai inhone civil society is the new frontier of war and can be manipulated to hurt a nation's interest okay so we will discuss the other part related to ngo in the internal security topic okay this is enough for the day so we have completed two topic for its entirety one is schedule 5 schedule 6 paisa act and why ladakh is demanding schedule 6 state is it clear to you no doubt with respect to any of the, these things okay so uh, yes current affair should be read like this okay जैसे मैं तो हफ्ते में से सिर्फ दो या तीन टॉपिक उठा पाता हूं आप रोज पढ़ते ही हैं तो जो भी टॉपिक पढ़े उसको उसका पढ़ के उसके बैकग्राउंड में इतने अच्छे से डेप्थ में स्टडी होना चाहिए इट विल टेक टाइम ठीक है टाइम लगता है इसको करने में मुझे हफ्ता भर लग जाता है ये पूरी साइट बनाने में तब जाकर के मैं चार पांच दिनों में ये पूरा इतना कंप्लीट करता हूं है ना ऐसा नहीं कि मेरा खुद का लिखा हुआ है आप देख रहे हो कि मैंने यहां से कॉपी पेस्ट किया है 
लेकिन ये भी तो एक रिसर्च है ना कि आपको पढ़ना पड़ेगा इतना ज्यादा ठीक है तो कोई सा भी करेंट अफेयर पढ़ रहे हैं उसको ऐसे पढ़े कि करेंट अफेयर पढ़ा उसके पीछे का स्टेटिक कॉन्सेप्ट पढ़ने की कोशिश करो क्योंकि डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन करेंट अफेयर से नहीं आते हैं कभी भी यूपीएससी मेन्स में तो आते ही नहीं है वो क्या आएगा कॉन्टेक्स्ट आएगा लाइक दैट कॉन्टेक्स्ट वॉज इन द न्यूज दे विल हाईलाइट और दे कैन आस्क द क्वेश्चन ऑन शेड्यूल सिक्स दैट डिस्क्राइब द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल एंड वाई लद्दाख इज डिमांडिंग शेड्यूल सिक्स स्टेटस हाईलाइट द चैलेंजेस और जो भी पूछ सकता है वो उसमें पूछेगा आपसे इज इट ओके थैंक यू सो मच मिलते हैं नेक्स्ट सैटरडे को